Yo, what's up guys, Xtend here, and today I want to talk about the 9950XJD. So, I got this CPU coming from a 9800XJD, and I already knew some stuff about this CPU, that like, I have to enable chipset drivers, I have to enable uh, game bar and windows, I have to reinstall windows as well, and have the balanced power plant selected as well. But like, all this stuff, and then they made no sense to me, and I ended up with less FPS than my 9800XJD. Even though this CPU should technically be faster. And let me show you why. Okay, so I made this a uh, quick paint. Uh, credit to Dirt Bauer for like these picks. Um, but essentially, as you already know, on the 9950XJD we got 16 cores. And on the 9800XJD we got 8 cores. But only 8 cores here, so CCD 0 got the extra cache, which is the X3D, which makes games run faster, okay? So, basically, you do not want to use both CCDs while gaming. That's just bad, okay? Still, the 9950 X3D should still be faster, and that is because the Fmax, and this is with PBO, okay? So, the max frequency the CPU can hit is way higher. Okay, I mean not that much, but like it's higher, so technically it should just be faster. And we got what 300 megahertz more, technically. I mean, that's theoretically as well with cooling, but on paper, this CPU should still be like better. So, today I want to show you how it really is. So, we're going to test four different methods of actually using the CPU. So, our first method is just going to be Windows default. So this is what the average Joe, you know, he bought a 5090, a 9950XGD, and he's probably an NPC, okay? And like, he just won a game. He just plugged everything in, built the PC, you know, he installed the graphics card driver, but that's about it. Alright, so before, let me just tell you my system specs real quick. So, as you already know, 9950XGD, I got a 4090. Uh, these are the RAM settings, so it's 6400 MHz, uh, 1 to 1. Uh... FCLK 2133, it's CL30, and basically all the timings are tuned, okay? And on the GPU, I just have this small overclock, which should just work. Also, on the CPU, I got PBO enabled, and I just got curve optimizer, so minus 25 on CCD0, which is the cache CCD, and minus 10 on CCD1. Uh, the cooler the CPU has is the Arctic Look and Freezer 3 420, so it's... The best AIO you can probably get. Okay, now, the second method is just going to be the chipset driver method, which is what most people on the internet will tell you to do, you know? And they probably didn't test it. So, you want to go to your power options and select balance, and you want to go to settings and enable the game mode, okay? Also, you want to go to Google, you want to type AMD chipset driver, okay? Just go here, uh, chipsets, AM5, x87e because that's what i got it doesn't matter anyways now and i just installed this i know here as you can see in the chipset driver there's amd 3 V cache performance optimizer driver so this is what we actually want so we hit install it's gonna take like uh, a minute and then it'll tell us to restart and there's also something in the bios we get a set so i'll show you in a sec okay as you can see it finished and we just need to restart so let's do that Okay, now the last thing you want to do in BIOS for the for this method is just go into AMD CPS. You want to go to SMU, and you want to set CPPC. And this is pretty much uh, core prioritization uh, to driver, since we're, we downloaded the driver. Alright, so our third method is going to be the X3D mode method. And this is what, like, motherboard manufacturers added to get more FPS, basically, like, it's like a one-click fix, essentially, but, like, the cost is crazy, especially in this CPU. So, let me show you how to enable it first, and then I'll show you the cost. Alright, now that I'm in BIOS, let's just go to OC Tweaker. As you can see, in ASRock, it's called Gaming Mode, and Gigabyte it's called X3D Mode. Uh, I don't know what it is called on MSI and Asus, but, like, I'll try to find screenshots for you guys. But, essentially, this is what it says. It is to allow either disabling the other CCD or SMT... To open games. I don't know what the fuck they thought about it, but like, I don't know what they wrote here, okay? But essentially, 
this like disables other CCD and disables SMT. But let me show you why this is real bad in this CPU. Okay, now we're back to Windows, and let me show you the cost. So you open Task Manager, you go to CPU, right? And we got 8 cores and 8 threads. You just went from a 16-core CPU and 32 threads to 8 and 8. That's wild to me. Okay, so our fourth and probably most optimal method is the process lasso method, which is what I like the most. Since... Essentially, this gives you like the power of doing the scheduling yourself. So yeah, obviously we need process lasso and we need a few important bio settings, which I'll show you now. And then I'll show you the process lasso settings. So let's dive into the BIOS again. All right, so now that we're in the BIOS, just go to OC Tweaker. Obviously, uh, I'm going to disable the gaming mode thing because I don't like it. But what you want to do is essentially just go to AMD CPS. It should be the same in almost every motherboard, I believe. You want to disable uh, global C states since we don't want the cores parking, okay? That's the first thing you want to do. Second thing you want to do is go to SMU and set CPPC, okay? To frequency. Now, what this does, which might get you a bit confused, okay? Is this sets the prioritization of the system to first use the frequency uh, CCD. So, the slow cores are going to be prioritized, but I'll explain later why this is beneficial to us, okay? Since we, what we're going to do is we're going to make Windows and everything else run on these cores, and then for our games, we can have eight pure cores for gaming, okay? So, let's go back to Windows and set this up. Okay, so now we're in Windows. Let me just show you. We got... 16 cores, 32 threads, and let me just download Process Lasso real quick. Okay, so now that we got Process Lasso open, what we want to do essentially is make sure our game is open, so CS2, which we're benchmarking. You want to go to Active Processes, right-click on CS2, uh, look for uh, CPU Affinity, so it's here at the top. Uh, hit Always, select CPU Affinity, and now, as you can see, it already detects like C uh, CCD1, CCD0, and like cache and frequency. So, just select the cache CCD, uh, hit OK, and uh, yeah, now it just sets it. So, the game only uses the first 16 threads, which are the cache CCD. So, just do that for every game, essentially, and yeah. Okay, guys, so the moment we've all been waiting for, the results. So, let's start with CS2, a more CPU demanding game. So, as you can see, I don't want to spoil, uh, method 1, which was Windows default, you know, the normie method, we got 845 on the average, P1, 276. Now, if you look at the chipset driver, that's an improvement, okay? That's okay-ish, but compared to actually disabling a CCD and only being with 8 cores, like, it's like using a completely different CPU. Like, yeah. Okay, but now let's compare this to like the manual method, which was with process lasso. Uh, I mean, it's almost the same and we can probably get this one a bit better because this one had SMT on and this one has SMT off. Uh, so I would say they're pretty much the same, but with method number four, you still have 16 active cores and 32 threads. And with X3D mode, you only have eight cores and eight threads. So you're killing your CPU for nothing. Okay. Now, let's do Cyberpunk 2077, a more GPU-intensive game, even though I have a 4090. So, as you can see, method number one, which is Windows default, average FPS 266. And with the chipset driver, sure, it got a bit better, 278. But, look how much FPS we lost. Windows default and XD mode, which is only with eight cores. So, yeah. And now, as you can see, with method number 4, we got a bit more FPS, so 339 compared to 334, and that's probably because this game likes more threads, it can utilize them. So, uh, yeah, I hope you like this video, leave a sub and a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.